greenhouses, hobby greenhouses, whichever way you want to call it, uh, instead of the commercial that a lot of our groups have. Uh, there are tremendous amounts of different kinds. Uh, you can buy them in boxes, you can buy them from companies, you can build them yourself. It just all depends on like what you want to do and what's interesting to you. Uh, this particular one is a, a kit from Texas Greenhouse that was put up. Uh, Texas Greenhouse is one of the bigger greenhouse suppliers in this part of the country. And they do a wonderful job. It's glass. As you can see, it's aluminum. It's easy to put up. It's lightweight. The clips go in here and here to hold in the glass. So it's a really a nice um, system and easy to put up and easy to maintain. And if something accidentally gets broken, a limb breaks off, you know, something goes in, fan in the back. And just a second when we go in, you'll see the little swamp cooler that helps keep it cool. Plus it has another fan to help direct a little bit of cool. And that's two to keep it nice. This one, she's got shade cloth going over the top. And that is easily to take off if it needs a little bit more sun or if it gets a little too hot, then the shade cloth is there to um, help control the heat inside. So what we're going to like to do real quick is introduce Claudia. Claudia is one of our master gardeners. This is her greenhouse and her pace and then her place to play and have a good time. So Claudia, tell them why you bought this. Well, I bought it because master gardeners, of course, inspired me and I do the work, do uh, a lot of work at the demo garden, which I invite anybody to come see. Everybody should see our demo garden. In the greenhouse there, I learned so many things. Hey there. See, we got a fun I little addition here. I, 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 I learned so many things and was so inspired to do a few things for myself. Um, and we're, we always get little sprigs of things or a little handful of seeds, and I would want to come home and, and try those myself. So that is okay. All right, so we're now we're on the inside, and you can see here's the other exhaust fan out of here is controlled by a uh, regular thermostat, almost similar to what you would have in your house. So when it gets too hot inside, that opens up and exhausts all of the warm air from the inside out. There's a fan on this side that you can't really see really easily, but that helps to push that hot air from that side over so that it goes out this way as well. Above it is another uh, exhaust fan. Uh, that takes it out from that side. So that makes it easy to get all of that hot air out of here and help keep it cool. Down below you have a swamp cooler and that keeps it cool during the summer. Uh, so that uh, it puts out a little bit of cool air. It's not refrigerated as such, but it, if those of you that have been around a long time, swamp coolers are really nice, especially when the humidity is out uh, because it just recirculates that. Here with the fan that blows, keeps blowing that around so that it gets to all the plants easily. Uh, here we've got shelves on both sides. Uh, these are metal shelves with, with uh, expanded wire bases. Those are really nice. So Claudia, tell us, what, what do you grow in here? Well, um, I have a number of rain lilies in my yard and in my opinion, you cannot have too many rain lilies. So the other day, I. Uh, gathered some seed off my rain lilies and I started some uh, new. Of course what I will be doing with these is putting some in my yard but mostly I'll be sharing because I, this is hundreds of little rain lilies. But uh, uh, here's some cuttings that I made from a devil's backbone. Uh, this is a plant that I bought at our demo garden this week and it's just sitting there being nursed until I get an opportunity to put it in the ground. But uh, mostly I uh, grow things for my own amazement and, and uh, my own yard. And, amazement and, and amusement. Huh? Amazement and amusement. There we That's go. What it is. Well, cool. Yeah. So here on the base, you've got uh, concrete or flagstone bases, and then you've got a rock on the pea gravel for the outside. Do you have any problem with weeds or anything in there? Only when I drop seeds. Uh -huh. Well, that's you know, amazing <laughs> how that works. When drop seeds or when, uh, when like a, a mother of million will drop her little babies on the ground. Uh, but those are very easily to be picked up. But generally I have no weeds whatsoever in the greenhouse. Um, 
but I because I do all my propagation outside there of you the go. bench. I know so you're having irrigation here, so you're using just a, a regular hose-in sprayer? Yes. yes. Uh, to water everything? Right. Oh, that's good. Do you have any other issues with uh, not being able to get out here enough to water it, not having an automated system? Uh, an automated system would be fun and uh, a nice thing to have. It would be very uh, uh, handy. However, there are some things some of the cactus or some of the succulents that don't need water True. and then at the same time i've got something else in here that does need more water so i'm kind of like the go. control maybe. all right well good deal so we've got we've got straps I, here i got straps there for my hanging baskets okay. in the winter time so right. i can hang a basket up there and protect it through the winter well very good well, this is a, kind of the basis of a smaller hobby greenhouse. Easy to maintain, easy to take care of. As you can see, you're watering by hand. You just take a couple steps here to get to one end, a couple steps back to get to the other end. Has plenty of drainage down with the pea gravel at the bottom. Uh, get plenty of sunlight if you need it, or you can put the shade cloth over to uh, help restrict some of that and keep the heat down. Do you know what uh, percentage shade cloth you have? Uh, I do not know Okay. That. Most of the people are using 55, 60%, which uh, cuts out 55, 60% of the sunlight and still allows enough to come in to help do a little bit of photosynthesis and as well as to help keep a little bit of heat going on in here as well. So it's a good idea that you got it easy to take care of. How often do you take it off or do I you? usually take it off in, uh, in the fall and uh, lay it out on my driveway, hose it down real good, clean it up, clean up the uh, outside of the glass outside mm -hmm. here, uh, kind of a uh, on jet on, there my, you go. Uh, on my water hose. There you go. And just clean it real good, let it dry, fold it up, and put it away until uh, late spring, early summer. Okay. So one last thing to think about is, you know, uh, we're getting warmer here in Fort Worth, and so we don't have as much cold temperatures as we used to. And now we're up to zone 8A, and they talk about zone 8B here, you know, here in another year or two. So it's just getting warmer. But on the occasion that you get a freeze, what do you do to heat in here? Okay, um, I have, uh, I've chosen to use a um, uh, oil-based radiator. Uh-huh. And uh, I've got a little oil-based radiator that I just pull in. I put it right here in the uh, middle of the mm -hmm. greenhouse. And I've got a power source over here. And um, just use that, that heater set on thermostats in their uh, uh, little houses for the baby chicks. And it comes on at, I think, I think about 35 degrees. Good. I think you're right. Yeah, it's in so, that area. So that's a good so deal. I've put my heater into it. And... Uh, my extension card into the power source Can't and there that. you go so there it works you go. for me well good well that we covered we covered cooling we covered heating we covered the watering we covered the basics of what you got to do uh, with a 10 by 12 you can get a lot of plants in here believe me when you're trying to put them in here and get them in during that winter or during that cold thing so we're going to stop here and Claudia thank you for sharing wow. uh, and just let everybody know that hey it's not as hard as it seems it can be done uh, they can have lean tos they can have Quonset huts they can have this type I mean every different style and shape all you got to do is have a little time look hopefully a little money helps absolutely absolutely nothing nothing's cheap these days right. and and the willingness and uh, increments to get out and have fun and to raise some plants in the garden and you know that's what it's all about so thanks and we'll get back in in the next one and we're going to do another greenhouse show you a different style
glass stays the same uh, visibility over years. And with the sun exposure, the polycarbonate will turn yellow. Uh, uh, and so it lets in less and less light over a period of time. As we go in and set just a regular, more of a patio type door, which is fine. Works well. Uh, so now we can go inside and see what's on the inside to see the differences between this one and the last one. All right, now we look on the inside. So the inside, as you see, wood, you know, this looks like uh, probably either treated or maybe redwood, it's hard to tell. Uh, but it works exceptionally well. On the inside, they be instead of the screen, metal and screen um, tops, they've used treated lumber which works well, but again, even though it's treated, eventually enough, enough water on it, it causes issues. Uh, we have uh, a exhaust fan here at the top, just like we did at the other one, and but no exhaust fan on this side. They have a ceiling fan just to make it a little cooler and to move a little air around. Uh, they don't have a swamp cooler in this one, uh, so it's not going to cool as easy during the summer. But it actually it's really you know a nice hot day and it's really pretty nice on the inside. The the lady that owns this is a, probably considers this a little bit more of a she shed than a greenhouse, but it has all of the availabilities of doing it. They have a sink, they have water, they have electricity. Again, you have got your uh, controller back here with your thermostat to control the exhaust fan, uh, and they chose to put rock here. Now this winter. Uh, they, they're going to upgrade a little bit and you can see here on the table they're going to put the brick in as a floor so they have a pattern of brick laid here uh, to see what they're going to do and that'll make it a little nicer uh, it's not going to be quite as uneven um, easier to wa walk on easier to control the weeds and easier to control moisture and things so lots and lots of different kinds of uh, hobby greenhouses uh, this is a little bit bigger than the other one, a little bit wider, uh, which is fine. Everybody has their own their own ideas. Uh, but, you know, again, all kinds of neat things. It's a little taller uh, and no shade cloth on this one. What they did is they went to a darker polycarbonate for the top to act as a shade cloth, which works just as well. So. I advise you if you're going to do it, look at and think about a hobby greenhouse. Look at all the different types. Look to see what uh, works for you, what fits your decor, what fits your needs. You can still get a lot of uh, potted plants in here during the winter to overwinter if you need to. Uh, probably just not as easy to do as much propagation here as, as you would in, in some of your greenhouses. But again, the hobby greenhouses are not a, a big, usually not a big propagation area like we would think as much as overwinter and to maybe repot a few things and to do some things there. So we wanted just to show you a couple different styles. Uh, the outside of this is a beautiful little house. You got a little picket fence around it, plenty of flowers, plenty of uh, color, uh, and it just really accents the rest of the house and the rest of the grounds that it's on. So. Um, try it, try something different, you know, again, wood versus aluminum, aluminum's going to last a little longer, uh, versus wood, uh, if you ever should have a fire or an issue, then you know, you're going to have a little bit more issue with the wood going up than you would have aluminum, because aluminum's not going to burn, uh, polycarbonate melts, whereas the glass, you know, will survive a little longer unless it's a really heavy, heavy blaze, uh, I can replace the small pieces of glass a lot easier than I can replace big sheets of polycarbonate. Uh, but again, a little bit less cost versus a little bit more ease of maintenance. So uh, hopefully it'll give you some ideas of what we're talking about and maybe think about what you want to do. Uh, get on the internet, look at all the different kinds of hobby greenhouses. But first of all, before you ever do it, we always want to recommend sit down, do your homework, get a sheet of paper out and decide what do you want to do with that hobby greenhouse? What is your issues? What are your goals? Do I have water? Do I have uh, electricity? Do I have a method of heating? Uh, do I have a method of cooling? How much money do I want to invest in it? Is it something I just want to put up a little bit of uh, 
plastic sheeting and a little frame just to overwinter or is it something I want to have as a permanent fixture on my ground so think about the, some of those things think about doing your homework first and again we're going to film a couple others and we'll let you know uh, and see some of the different types and some of the different issues that come up with it and some of the different reasons that people put in a hobby greenhouse so thanks and we'll see you soon talking about hobby greenhouses today this is more uh, more a hobby hothouse probably than a greenhouse uh, it is actually built onto the back side an integral part of the garage uh, so it's uh, only on it's on the inside it has no openings to the top so it all it has is the windows coming in from the side so all of the light is done by lighting on the inside instead of getting natural light it works it's just a different way of doing it this way you don't have the separate structure uh, it's all part of what you're going on doing anyway so kind of neat so in a minute we'll just take you inside and show you some of the things that they've done inside well come on in and now you can see the inside of it it's a very unique structure like I said built onto the back side of the garage uh, not a typical lean-to it's actually a part of the, the construction of what's going on so as you come inside, you can see it is small and long, uh, has wooden boards and shelves on each side, has a tile type floor that is not to have an issue with water, uh, has the same type of wall structure that you would have like in a shower, uh, so that you don't have to worry about the paint or that type. Uh, anyway, big windows, and then as you can see, all kinds of lights going on up here at the top. Uh, and then individual can lights as well. So hot, more of a hot house or hot room. Uh, it, you don't have to worry as much about cooling and heating. As you can see up in the top, they have regular ventilation, so it has air conditioning. Uh, it also has obviously heater too. So that's a nice. Uh, you get some ambient light coming in from the side, and so that gives you nice to look out. But it also gives you a little heat there during the summer, uh, and gives you a little bit of additional lighting. As you said, we have regular fluorescent lights up here. We have can lights in here for specialty items. Uh, they've got long shelves here on both sides. This is a wood, she couldn't remember the name of it, uh, but it's a special little wood that is uh, resistant to uh, water issues. Uh, you've got different other pots in here, you know, they're not too much you're gonna have in a greenhouse during the summer, obviously because uh, everything's going outside so you can enjoy it but it's a neat place to do something uh, here in the back we've got uh, a regular sink and you've got irrigation so that if you want to water by hand here you can um, plenty of places to hang things so again we just wanted to show you some different ideas and some different structures uh, you know one of the things that you're going to have to look at on something like this is if you get an insect issue in here, uh, you know, it is possible they could go into the rest of the garage. So it's, not, it's, so it's, it's actually part of that and using the same uh, heating and air system. So you may want to be aware of that. That could be an issue. Uh, it could, uh, because of the central heat and air, you could have a little more uh, issue with kind of keeping things, certain things cool, certain things warm enough. Uh, so you know again ups and downs to both sides uh, the night again the nice thing about it is that it's inside it's part of the construction uh, you can use it as long as you want to and if you end up getting tired of having plants and don't want to do it anymore you can always use it as just an area to store pots like she's done they have a lot of pots outside uh, you know so that way they can bring them in store them inside so they don't have to worry about weather and then pot them up take them outside and put them outside so lots of is lots of uh, ways to use a greenhouse lots of ways to use a structure uh, and again we just want to show you some of the very different kinds uh, and things to think about so once again your imagination is your limit your pocketbook is the other limit obviously uh, you know some people have the ability and, and some people don't this is giving you three different types of greenhouses to see this morning. One with aluminum and glass, 
another one with wood and polycarbonate, and then the third one is the integral part of a home with regular windows uh, and tile floors and bathroom type wall features so that you can don't have to worry about mildew and water and things and it's easy to wash down and keep track of so hope this helped you hope it's giving you some ideas of things that you might may or may not do uh, and be, you know we'll talk a little bit more about some other things as we go thank you All right, good morning. We're back to doing this again uh, and talking about it, hobby greenhouses. So today we're gonna at one of our master gardeners, Bill Vandiver, and this is his 10 by 24 uh, hobby greenhouse. It's put out by Texas Greenhouse. He's had it. How long have you had it now, Bill? I've had one for about 10 years, but that one's about three years old. All right, he's been playing with them for 10 years plus, and. And this one got uh, torn up by the storm, so they got a new, brand new one, for, courtesy of the insurance company. And uh, he's had it three years. So we're gonna just go in and look at just a little bit of the differences uh, between this one and some of the other ones that we have looked at previously. All right, now we're on the inside of it. This is a 10 by 24, nice greenhouse. It's got all the same things that most of the other ones had. Uh, they got lighting here. Uh, we've got the coolers here, we've got the, the heaters here, we've got the exhaust fan up at the top and then an exhaust vent down at the bottom. Uh, again, all controlled by a thermostat. We've got a fan there to help blow and circulate the cool air. And what this one has that the other ones didn't, this one has the in irrigation system. So it has some uh, mist system coming up out here hanging this way and then he's got a mist system going a little bit down here too as well uh you know it's all depends on how much you want to add to it again this is aluminum frame glass construction uh aluminum uh, shelves both small and large pea gravel here and down in the middle and then some stepping stone walkway here in the center so bill what do you think hey have you enjoyed the greenhouses Oh yeah. Do you use it more than for than for just uh, overwintering things, or do you actually grow things in here? Oh, I grow things all the time. Like what? All the succulents. All the succulents and all them up yonder. Okay. So what have you found? What if you were going to say what's your biggest benefit to having it? What would it be? Pleasure. <laughs> a pleasure. Okay. What's the biggest downside to it? The, uh, I'm having a problem with my system and it gets water where it don't belong. Okay. That's uh, the main thing that I've got going right now. That's always a problem, you know, anytime you're doing irrigation in the greenhouse is to make sure it's going to the right places and then in the right times. Do you have any insect issues in here? Mm -mm. Have you had any insect issues during like during the winter in the white fly or? Mm -mm. That's good. What about disease? No. No powdery mildew or anything? No, sir. Well, you're doing it right then, I guess, no, huh? Sir. All right. We just wanted to show you a little bit something different. Uh, it's nice to have the length in here to do different things and to uh, have um, choices. Uh, not everybody has the room for uh, uh, you know something that's 24 feet long but you can overwinter a tremendous amount of plants in here. You can propagate a tremendous amount. It just all depends on really what you want to do. I would caution you before you jump off into a 10 by 24 to make sure that you have one room, two, that you have enough plants to fill it, and three, you have enough time to take care of it. You know, because there is some issues that you always have to keep maintained, have them keep them clean, keep them updated. Uh, and all those kinds of things. We have shea cloth up on the top, uh, which uh, keeps a little of uh, the sunlight out. Do you know what uh, percentage it is, Bill? 50%, 40%? 50, I think. Okay, that looks about right. So 50% shea cloth, that way you can take it on and off when you need it. Uh, do you have any trouble keeping it cool? Yeah. 
Here? Yeah, in oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, be, yeah. Just because it gets 100 degrees outside. Well, it gets more than that in here. But you got, you know, you got a little bit of benefit in between being in between the buildings and in between the fence. Uh, that helps a little bit as well. So, um, anything you want to add to it? You would have done different if you were changing it, or you wouldn't add what? The cooler. Why? That's useless. It's useless, okay. When you got the when you got the exhaust fan going, mm -hmm. it goes that way. Cooler goes this way. Hey, Jack, you gonna win. Well maybe you know, maybe we just had it reversed, huh? Yeah. Yeah? Well then that that makes sense too. You know, you always have to think about it. When you're exhausting air going out, you know, you wanna make sure that your cooler is at the other end. You know and not fighting each other so always something to kind of keep in mind there but really i think you got a nice greenhouse you've got places uh pipe over here to hang hanging baskets uh you got irrigation uh, if you're not having any insect or disease issues then you're doing good how's your heater work heater works wonderful is that just a straight electric or is it a yes that gas out here gas too oh good compliments of teresa's husband well, you can't beat a deal like that. And how are you doing with the wood in here? Is the wood not yeah. doing too good with all the moisture, is it? No, it's about to fall apart. So that's something you got to think about. But other than that, you know, enjoy it. Have a good time. Yes, you see you've got a lot of your chemicals and stuff up here. That's one thing you want to be sure and keep up. Keep in, you know, think about is where are you going to store them? How are you going to store your chemicals so they're not uh, absorbing a lot of moisture and not in the way of people getting into it and actually using them where they don't need to be. So Thanks for tuning in, one more greenhouse after this and that way we'll show you from little bitty ones to great big ones to homemade to uh, factory made and every different kind of size in the world to help you to understand and to be able to pick if you want one or not and what size. Thank you. Right, this is our last installment of the home gr hobby greenhouses we're at one of our master gardeners sue kelly and she has a greenhouse that's very very unique it's approximately 16 by 30 and i'm going to let sue tell you real quick how it came to be okay uh, my dad was a nurseryman so i was always interested in what he was doing not that i really did that much but Anyway, at uh, one point, then I decided in the early 90s, I decided that I'd really like to have a greenhouse. Uh, and that, that was after dad passed away. And uh, so my husband's a firefighter and every firefighter has several jobs. And one of the guys was a uh, cement contractor. So he poured the footing and then uh, the windows around the greenhouse came from a school uh, in Everman that was being rebuilt or refurbished and uh, he had a fireman friend who was a welder so that's how it got put together uh, we've had several we've done several things to keep it warm or whatever and of course the heating in this one uh is certainly different I imagine I imagine <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i have a it is a uh, a unit that could even go in a house well cool there was a fireman who was an electrician and he had this extra thing and I've thought, I will never be able to afford it. But, you know, it's really not. Yeah, we're good. And, and so it's really well heated. And I really do very little in it, except it's a, it's really a really nice storehouse because many things that I have out in the yard have been stored in here for lots, several uh, seasons. Well, good. Well, let's go look at it up close and see. What... I'm... So it's a little bit like the one we talked about uh, the other day with wood construction up here on the top. And then it has uh, polycarbonate for the top. Uh, wood is all the way here. And we've got a little particle board on the outside edges going around. As you can see with the tree issues, when you have a lot of trees around, uh, you get a lot of pine needles, you get a lot of leaves, you get some soil built up. So you do have to periodically get up there and clean it off or else you're going to have issues. You know, it's going to block your sunlight off. 
but with all the windows on all the sides you got plenty of light coming in believe me and plenty of ventilation so so you got some unique uh, benches here uh, well the high school in Everman had a, uh, a greenhouse it was a one of those federal grants and they had to have they used it a few years but then I think it was one of those where you had to keep it so many years before you could dispose of it or whatever so uh, it was being used the last year or two by the uh, football training staff they had lots of that kind of stuff in there and so they when they decided to to tear tear it down or remove it the well, I got the benches from them uh, and th they've worked very well uh, the expanded wire tops yeah welded bottoms all kinds of different pieces of material put together yeah really that's another one of those welding things probably yeah that's uh, great here's the heating unit right here all right so you got a big furnace there that's great thermostats right behind you and okay then I, do have a, I, I have the meter back there and then the the temperature gauge here also yeah it's good to have a big big thermos you know thermometer inside so you can tell both the inside and outside and you know it's just kind of a unique you know thing so not everybody has the room for this not everybody has the ability uh, to gather material but it just shows you what you can do the one thing I noticed that you know obviously there's not a lot of tall people in your family <laughs> So, I mean, yes. yeah, I'm having to duck as I come by and, you know, and hold on so I don't hit my head. But that's okay, too, you know. And the fans, we did put yeah. the fans in. So we got the fans on each end, so that's good to get a little ventilation. You got the heat here, so you don't have a, what do you do for cooling other than just opening windows and the fans? That's it. Okay. Yeah, because most everything's out of there yeah. by now. True. Just a few things. Uh, and you can tell I was a former florist because of all of the containers <laughs> and some of this other stuff. That's okay, too. Stuff. You know, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. And so, again, you know, a little bit of it looks like mulch on the floor. We got yes. some, we got some uh, just bricks that were being reused from different things. Uh, we've got all kinds of chemicals here. It probably shouldn't be in here. Which really shouldn't be in the greenhouse without yeah. being in a locked up cabinet, but. I started, I have back there to put all that in that just hadn't happened <laughs> <laughs> does absorb a little moisture what do you do about irrigation in here? trash can yeah and i have uh you know i put uh, uh fertilizer in uh -huh. it before i use it but i that's one thing that's on the list to do is to get the uh the water back water back in, in. Yeah, well, yeah i mean how yeah you know if you got a lot of plants in there you know you might especially need especially when we have yeah do you have any insect issues being underneath all the trees back oh, here? Okay. Really. Any any disease issues? No, no? you know, I, no, because this is definitely not airtight. Right. So it's fine in the winter. I really never have had uh, mealybugs yeah. or white bugs yeah. or anything to speak of. We got a lot of protection from the trees and stuff, so you probably, unless it's just a really super bad year, you probably don't have to worry too much about it, and that's good. And with the windows open, you get the natural... Uh, predators come in and feed on any insects that would develop uh, and get plenty of airflow obviously so I think it's neat I, I applaud you for the use of different types of material and and for being inventive it's fun to play in yeah yeah mm -hmm. anything else you would suggest to people anything any good tips about having a hobby greenhouse uh, you really do need water yes and that's, I mean, that's, that's important yeah, that's it's important you know and, uh, have a place outside when it gets really hot. Because sure. That's what I pot outside. Yeah. So what the, you got a little potting shed outside, uh, you know. But hey, enjoy it and have fun and, and you know look at all the different opportunities. Here's a here's a different one that it was kind of unique and it makes yours different than everybody else's. So I hope it gave you some ideas about a hobby greenhouse. Hope you enjoyed it. We've had a lot of fun filming it. Uh, and seeing a lot of different uh, issues and different things. So have a great day.